This is Craig with Carshalton Advisory. In this video, we're going to prepare you for writing the Excel 2016 core exam by walking you through the practice tasks for Objective 3-1, Create and Manage Tables. Let's get started. With our 3-1 workbook open, our first job is to convert this array into a table. And so we can do that by selecting any of the cells within the array that we want to convert, going to Insert on the ribbon, and from there selecting Table. Once we've done that, it comes up with the Create Table dialog box. It confirms the area that we want to convert, as well the fact that whether or not it has headers. So our directions have designated that it does have headers, and we can do that by taking a look at it as well here. So once I click OK, you're going to notice a dramatic change in appearance. Uh, the other thing you'll notice that this top row is, uh, is differently formatted, and that's because this is a header row. And so it includes with these drop-down contextual boxes here uh, the opportunity to filter and sort by these. That all comes along with creating a table. Now I'm going to undo this here and uh, show you an alternative, me alternative method, and that's by just hitting Control-T, which brings us to the same dialog box. We'll click OK, and now we have the setup as a table. Excuse me. All right, next we want to assign the name Toys 2016 to our table. So we can do that by making sure any cell within our table is selected. Uh, when we do that, the contextual ribbon tab for table tools appears. We're going to click Design, and here is our opportunity to name the table. So when we click in here, we can call this Toys 2016. Now this is just like naming a cell within Excel in that they can't start with a letter, or excuse me, can't start with a number, um, that they must start with a letter or an underscore. As well, there can't be any spaces in your name. So it has to, uh, it has to be a single string of text. Next, excuse me, next we need to uh, move the July column so that it's between June and August. Uh, so the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to just start by clicking in cell D2. I'm going to hit Control shift down arrow to select the entire column. Once I've done that, I can click anywhere on this green border that surrounds it. And when I do that, you're going to notice this green, uh, it almost looks like a separator icon, is going to shift across with me as I move this column. When I release, after clicking and dragging, it's now actually cut that column out and pasted it into my desired location for me. Next, we're going to do a similar thing, except with rows this time. So we need to move Linda, Max, and Nancy in between K and Olivia. So let's select this row here. I'm going to right-click. After that row is selected, I'm going to go Cut. And once we get to K and Olivia, I'm going to highlight here. And I'm going to go to Insert Cut Cells. I'm just going to move this so you can see that contextual menu. So now we have the Insert Cut Cells. And when I've done that, I haven't lost any data. It's just merely moved Linda from up top down to a lower section. Uh, we can do something similar as before when we, we drug what we wanted moved. So I'm going to select the uh, row. This time, rather than selecting the entire row by clicking by the number 6, I'm actually just going to click within the, the row on the table. And you'll notice that now it is stopped at the end of November. I'm going to click this green border. And I'm going to drag this down between K and Olivia. And then we need to do it with Max as well here. So this time what we can do is we can, we can uh, cut up on the top here, just to show you a different way. We're going to so select where we want it to go. And this time in the uh, cell section, we're going to insert cut cells via the ribbon. So now we've moved all three of those rows without losing or overriding any data within our workbook, within our worksheet. Next, we want to add a row to the table. Uh, so I'll show you a couple ways to do this. One nice thing with tables is that uh, this, ha okay, excuse me, we need to add this between uh, two of our other rows. So between Quentin and Steve, so I'm just going to highlight those two, those rows here. Uh, when I in right click on it, I have the option to insert and I have the option to select table rows above. So when I do that, there's now a blank row that's insert right above Steve where I wanted it uh, that we would call Reina. 
Now it doesn't fill in any any names or any of the numeric data since there's no formulas in this. It's all strictly constants that have been entered. Uh, I'm going to undo this and we'll do it one more time using the table tools. Excuse me, insert. So from our home ribbon, we're going to insert table rows above. So that was the same as our contextual menu when we right clicked with our mouse. And it gives us the same row here. We're going to type in the name that it's requested for us. You'll notice that all the formatting stayed consistent. If you had a shaded rows within Excel in just an array and you inserted a row, you'd notice all your, your you know, the formatting would shift as well. So it wouldn't stay in line as it does by using a table. Next, we need to add a row to the end of the table for a sales piece person named William. So there's, again, two ways to do this. Uh, one nice thing with tables is all we really have to do is start typing. So if I just start typing William and hit enter, Excel automatically adds a row to the table for me. So that's one way of doing it. Or I could do it in a similar manner. I could select this row. I could go to insert, table row below, uh, just like I had done previously in the Reina example. All right, now we need to add a column named December to the right end of the table. So this uh, works similar to when we were working with rows. All we need to do is select uh, cell M2 here where we want it to go. We can just start typing December and Excel automatically extends our table to fit. So tables are actually a fairly powerful tool that you can use and as you get the hang of them, it, you'll, you'll find it's one area that that you'll be able to get ahead of uh, a lot of your other colleagues or, or coworkers. Uh, a lot of uh, long-term Excel users haven't really put in any effort to understand how tables work, and so they're not super comfortable with them. If you spend a little bit of time, you'll you'll quickly become one of the experts on it and be able to help out your coworkers, as well as be able to speed up a lot of processes that you might normally do uh, by having an understanding of how they work. Last, we need to delete column M from the table. So that's this December one. Um, so again, a couple ways we can right click on it. We can delete this table column. Uh, we also have the ability to do it up here from our, our ribbon if we don't want to right click and use the contextual menu. Uh, the last thing that we need to do is to convert this back to a range. Now this isn't part of our practice task, but it is one of the learning objectives for this chapter. Now, so what we do is we uh, go into table tools design and we're going to select this convert to range option. Now, when we do that, you'll notice there's one disadvantage. And so when I click this, uh, it, it wants to, it's going to double check and make sure that's what I really want to have happen. We'll say yes. And so now this is no longer a table. Now, the downside is it doesn't look any different. And so this may not be the formatting uh, that you really want to have. Um, so that's one of the drawbacks of doing it this way. Um, but you'll notice the drop down arrows are gone. If I just type into column M here and hit December, you'll notice that Excel doesn't automatically extend this anymore. So this is just a regular uh, run-of-the-mill uh, array now for us. Now we can get rid of uh, this formatting if we want to um, by getting rid of all the fill. We can get rid of all of the grid lines. And uh, this way, it, it looks just like a normal part of Excel for us. Anyways, that's all for this video. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll look forward to you for the video on practice test for 3-2. Thanks for watching.